Welcome back. To Satisfactory. I'm so glad you're here. Sticking with the blueprint theme, and since we are in the steel range, we're going to go ahead and build a steel beam and a steel pipe blueprint. And basically, we'll build one blueprint and then change the recipes inside, and we'll be all set. So before we start, let's take a look at steel, our steel beam recipe. So this is compressive, four makes one. So one input will make, or yeah. So um, we're, we're okay to have one input and then it'll automatically come out with one belt. If we wanted to, we could make four inputs and have one output and still have maximum Mark V belt speeds, but I don't feel obligated to do that. Since it's a blueprint, we'll just make multiple copies of it. If we want four beams to be consumed, we'll put down four steel beam blueprints. Steel pipe is kind of the same, except the ratios are slightly different. It's compressive on the belt three items turn into two items, both of which use constructors. So we're all set. Well, let's start with the input. That's where we're gonna add our steel ingots. And then we're going to put in a nice little splitter right off the bat. Okay. Well, you know, you could go right there, but let's give ourselves a little bit of room. Not a lot. Connect that to the outside. So that's where we receive our initial dose of steel ingots. And then we want to try to get as many machines in here as possible, but there are going to be a couple of limitations, right? So let's look at production. And I mean, given where we put this, we put this right on the edge. We need to give it probably that much space, maybe that much. Let's put one down and see where we are. So we want to merge the result of this, a bunch of instructors down this line, down this line. So we'll go like this, get close to the edge as we can. I don't know that that can get much closer. So we will output now you're thinking oh just go ahead and put another one here but then we won't have room to deal with the output so we're only going to build three on this side plus we already know that the amount of stuff that gets pulled in is very high so we don't have a lot of room on the belt for a bunch of constructors so we'll put three on this side then we'll come over here and put in two more that we're going to merge down a separate line. We're just going to line that one up with the other one so we can split them. And just as before, we want to get that merged down. Totally missed. Let's try that again. Matter of fact, let's get height on this. We can see what we're doing. Okay, so the output of this machine gets merged down this direction.
I wonder if I can move that back just just one little baby click. Just like that. Just so there's enough room to actually build a belt. The resources come in. I could put that on the same line as this. We'll split. This way. Alright, same deal. Comes in, goes straight down, but then we want another splitter on this line and on the middle. Let's get some height. Splitter on the line, but also in the middle of this. Like that. My goodness. These blueprints are undeniably tight projects. Let's go down the line, and then down the line one more time. Just enough room to see that we want belt split into that machine, split into that machine, the main line comes in here, we'll split into this machine, continue the main bus, split into that machine, and then we have room for one more, split into that machine, okay? So with that right there, we've got 10, sorry, five, machines ready to go. Now, let's get everything out, I suppose, first. We'll merge this down the line. You see the on the right there, there's the orange arrows and the green arrows. If those look like a single group of three arrows, then you know you're on the right line for that machine. See there? Then we merge this down. Do the same thing here. Double check, make sure we're merging out. So those, those three machines are fully merged. Let's merge these two machines. All right, so the material, the iron ingots in this case, come in here. They go around to this. These five machines get iron ingots, and then they make steel products. In this case, steel pipes and steel beams. The results get merged down their respective lines. And now we need to exit the system. So this first one is just a spacer because we want to exit two away. And then we want, hmm, 
Let's call an audible here and see if we can merge in the second line that way. So that make that will make more sense here in a minute. What we're gonna do is merge everything from this floor. out of the system. And then this, we could just whip this in, I suppose. And for some reason, I don't want to do it on this side. I think that's going to clip, but it didn't. Okay. So all the material gets processed and sent down and out of the system. And then what we'll do is when we go to stack this, we'll have a connector ready for the next level. And this will make more sense in a minute. Right? So whatever enters here merges here and then exits. So that's set up. And then we need a similar thing here we said we want two up on this side so we gotta do the same here then we want that so the materials come in here then immediately get lifted to the next level I actually got both of those right Right, so the iron ingots come in here, hits the splitter, half go over to these five machines, half go up to the next level. Easy so far. Then once everything gets processed, everything comes out of the system. If this blueprint is stacked, then everything that comes out of the system here comes into the system here comes down and then goes out of the system along with everything else. And then we'll just have to have an external lift here and an external lift here. There might be, and I stress might, be a way to do this with all internal components, but I haven't researched that yet or haven't played around with this design quite yet enough to get there. All right. Very close to done. Let's put in our steel floor because this is a steel theme building. We're going to use the grip grip metal grip metal foundation. Easy for me to say. just wall this off. Now, you know, you're going to use whatever walls you want. I'm going to stick with the... It's unfortunate that these walls aren't... They're not better for verticality. address that clipping issue in a minute. Let me just build off these walls. stripe thing that I'm doing wasn't my original plan but it kind of works 
Only problem is when you stack it, it's going to double the steel part. That's okay. Okay, there we go. So we've got a nice striped building here. It's got windows all around it. And <laughs> the movement of this clip right here is notorious. So what I'm going to do when we build it out, I'm just going to put a concrete wall right here. And that'll give us a little bit more shape and dimension. We'll just put another wall right on top of this one and zoop it up. And that should cover that clip. Right. So then you can imagine ingots enter here. They get split. Half go into this floor. Half go up here. And then you build another one on top of this, and then you lift this into effectively this hole, but up here. I'm probably describing this very poorly, but it's a virtual thing that you have to sort of keep in mind. Are you allowed to drop a blueprint on a blueprint? You might be able to. That's not this video. All right, so the reason why I'm going with only five, even though there's obviously room for um, another level, is because we want the flexibility to have a precise number of machines. If I put in another five right now, that would mean 10 machines in total. And that would basically mean 600 units of inputs required to keep that system at a high quality level of uh, efficiency. But I don't want to do that. So this system is going to be a nice five machines. And then we'll stack it if we want more. Right, it's 60 per machine. So we'll jump over here. I probably should have copied. So let's copy. Let's paste. Let's paste. Let's paste. All right, those machines are powered. And then we need to decide how we're gonna power this whole thing. I'm going to suggest a high level double wall and a low level single wall, but you're going to do whatever you want to do. All right, I'm going to go like that. That's a double. And then on this side, I'm going to do a single right below it. Okay, we're still using the Christmas lights. And then I'm gonna connect it up like that. So the power's gonna come in here and it's just gonna go upstairs. And then when you build another one on top of that, you'll just build, you'll connect this to this, which is basically, you know, this one. Then on the inside, we've got five machines to connect. I'll just put this right on the center point of each of these. And then we'll move in our power.
There we go. So there we go. We're all set. That's a done deal. Fully stackable. Steel iron, steel pipe. Blueprint. You can stack them as high as you like, but you have to keep in mind the amount of um, input that the belt can hold. That's your limitation. So if you look at something like a 780 belt, which is Mark V, divided by 60, which is the maximum the default consumption of iron ingots for steel beams. 13 machines can live on that. So we can put this blueprint in three times and have 15 machines, and then two of them will run a little slow, which means, you know, a couple of ones of the very, very top will run extra slow. Um, as opposed to having a blueprint that has 10 machines in it and then building two of those and having that have seven machines that are running extra slow. So that's the reason why we're going with the five. If you really wanted it, if you were gonna say, well, I'm just gonna build multiple 10 machine towers, then that is also an option. Uh, so the floor here just serves as the basis for the floor of this level. I wonder, am I happy with this strike? I might be. And then we'll have a concrete wall right here. Adds a little, a little showmanship to it. Maybe we'll do the same on this corner. Make it look like a support wall. Well, we, we already did the recipe set. So let's go over here and we'll call this steel pipe standard. And that's 300 input steel ingots and 45 output steel beam. You can change that to beam. Okay, we'll select an icon, which is a constructor. Or can I just make it a beam? I mean, that's what we're going for, right? Select the background. We'll leave that a nice blue. Then we'll save this blueprint. All right, and then we'll come back around. F that. We'll get back in here and we'll change the recipe to steel pipe. That's 30 by 20. So 150 by 100. Copy. Paste, 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 and paste. Okay. What were those ratios again? steel pipe 150 by 100 change this to pipe 
150 by 100. Select different icon. Pick a pipe. Save that. Hit the load button. There we go. If I hit load on this, it should just reload the same thing, basically, but with a different recipe set. Then let's load this one. What? I don't have the resources. Uh, it's claiming I'm short on cable. All right, here's what we'll do. Clear the designer. Rob the cable out of here. And then load the blueprint. Then we'll just double check to make sure. Ah. So we didn't change the recipe. Pipe. We didn't change recipes at all. How'd that happen? Wow. Brutal. This is why you always check your work. Now we'll save this as our pipe version. Overwrite, thank you. Clear it. Get the cable. Load it. There we go. Perfect. And with that, we're done. Depending on what kind of ratios we want for outputs, we can stack this more aggressively than the steel beam, just because the net inputs are so much more friendly. Right? 15 input, 150 inputs, we could fit two of them would be 300, four of them would be 600, five of them would be 750. So we could fit five of these on a single Mark V belt. And it would work. So there you go. Two brute blah two blueprints for the price of one. Very soon, if not the next episode, maybe the episode after that, we'll make use of all these blueprints that we've just made. But for now, I'm going to go check my advent calendar. And I'm going to thank you for hanging out. I do appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.